the way capital punishment is, has been used in this region, not just in Malaysia but also in Singapore, and particularly in the Malaysian context, I think today is a watershed. I say today is a watershed because today for the first time, we have got the representative, the legal representative of one of our citizens who is in another country facing death every day. The representative of that person has come to our country to plead that our country does something to save its own citizen. This has never, to my knowledge, happened before, except perhaps in the very uh, much publicized case of, uh, of uh, Barlow in Chambers in the, in, in, in the early 80s and all that. In very few instances has this happened. And in the case of our, one of our citizens in Singapore, I think this has never happened as far as I understand. And this is a key point because a large number of Malaysians are arrested under Singapore's harsh drug laws. They are tried, they are sentenced, they are executed, and the Malaysian government has remained silent. As an anti-death penalty activist and human rights lawyer in Malaysia, I am disappointed with the attitude of our government. There seems to be a I scratch your back, you scratch my back arrangement, a dirty secret arrangement between Malaysia and Singapore where I'll do whatever I want with my citizens or any citizens of yours I catch, you do whatever you want with your citizens or any citizens of mine you catch and we'll not complain about each other, we'll keep quiet. We'll hand in hand, we will execute each other's citizens and our own citizens. Let's do this together. That is the dirty secret arrangement that Malaysia and Singapore has and no one is questioning it. Why? Let's look at this particular case. Let us look at the consequence of this dirty secret arrangement between Malaysia and Singapore. What are the consequences? Yong Wee Kiong was 19 years old when he was arrested by Singapore police. He was a child, just out of childhood. He was, he's now about 21 years old and he's sitting there in Cluster A, in Changi Prison, in that cell block, day in, day out thinking about the noose that is waiting for him. And what is his crime? Why is it that he is subjected to a mandatory death sentence? Assuming he is guilty, would imprisonment not be adequate? Why mandatory? Why remove the discretion? These are the questions that we are asking. And what shocks us is that despite the extreme youth of this particular person, Yong Wee Kong, and we're not saying that the other cases where Malaysians were executed was right. But let us take this particular case. Despite the extreme youth, despite the extenuating circumstances in Yong's case, the Malaysian government remains silent, refusing to get involved. This is what we are against. And I, wish, I want to announce today that the days when the Malaysian government can keep silent and let our citizens be executed abroad has ended. From now onwards, I think there will be campaigns that will be carried out on behalf of every one of our citizens who is facing <coughs> barbarous and unfair laws abroad and who are about to have their life taken away from them. Today we start because Ravi, who has fought I can only say this, a heroic battle and, and a, a very unprecedented one because remember the clemency petition was actually rejected by the President of Singapore. He was on, about to be executed. Mr. Ravi managed to somehow get a stay of execution after the clemency petition was rejected, which is an amazing uh, achievement. And he remains unsupported by the Malaysia or its government. It is a shame to all of us. It is a shame to all Malaysians. So I call upon, we call upon the Malaysian government to snap out of this attitude that is taken and speak up for our citizens. Let us save Yong Wee Kiong's life. Apart from echoing uh, all those that have been said by both uh, Mr. Ravi and as well as um, Surin, I just want to add two points. Um, one, uh, before anyone jumps into this whole issue that under Islam there is uh, punishment, therefore we cannot object to uh, such punishment and all that, I just want to state very clearly uh, there is no such concept of mandatory death penalty under Islam. So I just want to put that on record before we get any ministers coming into the picture and giving that, that restriction. Now, secondly, um, I also want to say that uh, two weeks ago, we hear this heroic uh, rescue mission by uh, uh, 
a certain number of people from uh, Amno who went to Laos to rescue a Malaysian citizen uh, who has been kept in uh, detention for a year for uh, purportedly uh, a trafficking offence or smuggling, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Now, they went all the way to rescue uh, that person. And he's a very lucky person to, to, to get that kind of support. I think what we need to do is, in a similar way, this rescue mission should be done uh, for Mr. Yong Bui Kong. He's young, he's 21, barely could vote. Uh, and uh, I, I hear no news, I've not heard of any sort of statement coming from any ministers or any representative from the ruling party or anyone like that. So I think this is a good opportunity for them to, to do something, whether for political mileage or for, whether for human rights issue. The point is that there's one guy who's waiting for the gallows and I think we should do something. Considering the seriousness of the matter, um, I mean, you, you, you saw that, that very much publicized journey in the Rachel Corby to go and save people in Gaza, or is it Rachel Corby? And here's a young Malaysian just across the causeway, and they can't be bothered, you know. So the the, the I think Malaysia must act very um, in a swiftly, and very determined manner. There are avenues. If Singapore won't listen, it's open to Malaysia to file a case in the ICJ. Because remember, this is not just a case of you're saying, look, don't execute this guy. He's young. Blah blah blah. There's a further point here. There's an illegality involved here. The Singaporeans broke the law. They abused the clemency petition. Their government and their cabinet abused the clemency petition yes. process. Okay. Instead of letting the uh, president decide, the cabinet usurped his role. So you're, you're talking about a stark illegality in the legal process. That gives an opening to the Malaysian government to go to the ICJ. Now, if Singapore is not going to back off, then I think Malaysia should consider legal proceedings in this matter. And 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 because we're talking about the saving of a life, other considerations must take a back seat. A human life is sacred. Any life is sacred. So they must take this position. And legally, of course, there's not that much that the Bar Council can do. But I think civil society is resolved that we will campaign to save Yong's life. And civil society will campaign and, and, and will go to the public with this issue. If necessary, we will carry out demonstrations in front of the Singapore Embassy. We will do this. We will, we, will, we will demonstrate in front of the Malaysian institutions, the foreign ministry, the prime minister's house. If he refuses to take action, we will do the necessary to bring this matter before the Malaysian public so that the Malaysian public can bring the necessary pressure on our government to do what is right. We will, we will, we will do what is necessary.